do we could proceed here? Sure. Okay, this public hearing is being convened in order to receive submissions from the public regarding proposed land use bylaw number 57 2002, amendment bylaw number 438 2017, area one, the lot two, community lands. Anyone who believes that their interest in property is affected by the proposed bylaw will be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard or to present written submissions respecting matters contained in the proposed bylaws. Any person who wishes to present a written submission to council may do so, and all written submissions must be received by council before the close of this hearing and presented to the minute taker. If a member of the public wishes to address council, they will be asked to sign the speaker's list and should begin by clearly stating their name and address for the record. Comments should be related to the subject bylaw and be directed to council. Members of council may ask questions to seek clarification following your presentation or points raised. However, the main function of the council members is to listen to the views of the public. It is not the function of council members to debate the merits of the proposed bylaw with individual citizens. In considering the proposed bylaw, council has received documents which may influence its decisions. These documents are available for viewing during this hearing. Your only opportunity to comment on the proposed bylaws is during this hearing, as members of council may not receive further information, may not receive further submission, verbal or in writing, after the close of this hearing. Council can determine when the proposed bylaws will be scheduled for consideration, and council may either adopt or defeat the bylaws, or alter and then adopt the bylaws, provided that the alteration does not alter the use, increase the density, or without the owner's consent, decrease the density on any area from that originally specified in the bylaw. That's that. Okay. So, um, Dan, tell us things. So thank you, Mayor and Council. So I'll give you an overview of um, this bylaw, the process so far, and what's contained in the bylaw tonight. Um, so as, as the Mayor mentioned, we're talking about Area 1 of Lot 2, so the community lands owned by the municipality. Um, area 1 located at the corner of Senior Road and Bowen Island Trunk Road. It's in the Comprehensive Development 19 zone, so Area 1 of that zone, and it's shown with this dotted line currently along here. Um, and what the, the zoning would currently allow, it would allow apartment dwelling and supportive housing as principal uses, a number of accessory uses, um, restaurant, general services, office, medical clinic, retail use. Um, it allows for apartment dwellings. It has a maximum height of 14 meters or three stories, um, setbacks of three meters. It has a maximum floor area of up to 2,500 square meters of gross of maximum floor area with that divided out as up to 1,500 square meters of apartment dwelling and up to 1,000 square meters of commercial use. Um, so what this bylaw is before you, I'll just give you the overview of the bylaw and then go into the history of it. So the bylaw would amend, it would amend that zone to allow up to um, 1,000 square meters of residential floor area outright with an additional residential floor area allowing a proportion of commercial floor area maxing at um, a maximum of 2,200 square meters of residential floor area with the provision of 300 square meters of commercial. So the allowable floor area would remain constant at that 2,500 square meters, but it just gives um, ability of somebody developing it to have some flexibility in how they allocate that gross floor area. Um, it would redraw the zone boundaries between areas one and three. So the zone boundaries were drawn in advance of any subdivision. So a recent subdivision was done to subdivide area one out from the other two areas. Um, so this rezoning would, would draw the zone boundaries to match that lot line. Um, it would also redu reduce the setback on Senior Road to zero meters. So this was done by Council in a recent development variance permit to reduce that setback along Senior Road to allow for greater um, development closer to Senior Road. And so this would just capture it in the zoning bylaw as well. Um, and finally, it would re remove the restriction on the number of stories. So the height regulation would remain at the 14 meters. But what it would do is remove that three meter or three story regulation. So it would be it would remain the same massive building, but people could allocate extra stories if they can as they go into the hill. Um, so this is the redrawn zone boundary. So area one is, is now matches the actual um, property boundaries that are there, with area three taking up the remainder part of it. Um, so for background, so in January of this year, council 
um, directed staff to draft an amending bylaw for Area 1, so to allow for that up to 2,200 square meters of residential floor area. On February 27th, that bylaw was read a first time as bylaw 438, and it was referred to the Islands Trust and the Advisory Planning Commission. Um, on May 8th, Council gave, amended the bylaw to remove that um, or three stories regulation and gave second reading to the bylaw and referred it to a public hearing. In terms of referral responses, the Islands Trust in April, on April 5th, um, the Executive Committee resolved that the bylaw is not contrary to or at variance with the Islands Trust policy statement. Um, and the APC consider this at their April 3rd meeting. Um, so they made a number of points. So they support the increase in residential floor area or the sort of increased flexibility. So increased residential floor area without increasing the total total floor area. They supported the requiring some commercial development to be able to max out your residential um, floor area. Um, and discussing the area boundaries, they had some concerns about the size of road along Senior Road. Um, and there's so at that point recommended the number of stories criteria be removed from the bylaws. So that's the recommendation council followed at second reading. Um, and finally, in terms of public comments, at the time of writing, we've received no comments from members of the public. Great. Thank you. Okay. We've got Tyler. <clears throat> so we have uh, Tim Rose to speak. <clears throat> the topic is the Boyan Health Center Foundation. No. Can I read this a public hearing? I know. Hopefully, this will make sense when I read it. Okay. I, it is with respect to this rezoning. Okay. 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 Um, and it is going to come a little bit out of left field, and I apologize for that. But uh, hopefully, after I've read through it, you'll see my point. Um, I think I'm here speaking on behalf of the Bonau Health Center Foundation. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, in January 2016, at a committee of the whole, the Bowen Island Health Center broached the subject of using a small portion of the community lands for a health center. The society was not encouraged by Council's timing, and it was suggested that we look for another partner. We do note that medical clinic remains a permitted use in this rezoning proposal. Approximately 15 months ago, the society, now the Bowen Island Health Center Foundation, began discussions with DK Harris Properties Limited. An agreement was reached which will allow us to purchase strata title to the main floor of the proposed development at Village Drive and Dorman Road at the developer's cost as unfinished space with no land cost. The value or benefit to the health center is approximately $600,000, which effectively reduces the cost of the project by 20%. The DK Harris Properties rezoning application, as you know, is on the agenda for the regular meeting tonight, and we're concerned that should that rezoning not proceed, it would jeopardize the community health center initiative. The Health Center Foundation very much supports the DK Harris Properties rezoning. It addresses health care and housing in an expedient manner at little cost to the municipality. Both needs were identified as community priorities as recently as Saturday's Community Foundation Vital Conversations workshop. However, there's some uncertainty as to the success of the DK Harris application. Our preference is to move forward with DK Harris. However, our priority is to open a health center at the earliest possible opportunity and if council decides not to proceed with the rezoning for DK Harris, we ask you to include some mechanism in the rezoning for area one lot two, which would provide us with an equivalent benefit to that offered by DK Harris properties and ensure that the community health center initiative does not become a casualty of such a decision. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have Peter Frinton speaking on bylaw 438. Hi. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Peter Frinton, 741 Carter Road. I noticed that there no were no written submissions. It's not attracting a lot of um, attention. Uh, this uh, rezoning, and uh, it is essentially a housekeeping item. Um, 
it's not a major initiative on its own, and I can understand why that doesn't attract a lot of attention. But when I was reading through it, there were a number of things that uh, it flagged for me. And the first was uh, the overall height. And because there are no schematics, there are no concept drawings other than the James Tudor one, there's no real sense of what the development would look like. Uh, and to me, this is a major failing. It's something that's required of all uh, developers is to provide an inkling of what it is that they want to build. Um, and it's certainly uh, um, lacking in this, in this respect. So 14 meters comes to approximately 46 feet, uh, nominally four stories, perhaps five stories, if you dug down and excavated somewhat. Um, you have a change of terrain uh, on that uh, corner lot. It's not all the flat spot, it goes up the hill as well. And so there's a terrific opportunity to build something akin to what Erickson designed at Park Royal at Evelyn, uh, to have this kind of terrace up the hill. Uh, there's also a wonderful opportunity uh, to uh, create a pedestrian uh, connection between the lower level and the upper level at the new community uh, facility site at the top. Um, and, uh, and those are terrific things. But what we're not seeing is what that might look like. And I think it's premature to be going ahead and introducing, or rather uh, completing uh, bylaws without the benefit of, of this, which I think will be a huge selling point. But apartments as a, as a novel housing form on Boeing. It was first introduced by the last council. And uh, I don't think that many people quite get what that is. That's a, a building and it's not ground oriented. People take elevators you know, inside the building. Um, as I said, it has the opportunity to be very well uh, done in this case, which is different from the permission in area three of, uh, of lot two on top beside this, you know, beside uh, the school that if the community center didn't go ahead that you might have a 14 meter uh, apartment building up there which I think is in name. Um, but I'm very concerned that, the, uh, that there is not a fire chief's report associated with this which uh, for those that were around will recall was required of the in proposal at um, Artisan Square and they had a very novel solution which was actually terrific was to have a metal uh, mezzanine level uh, bridge that would, uh, or a concrete uh, a bridge so that they could access the upper levels of that building where that it were built uh, through uh, from essentially ground level at Artisan Square. So again, that's something that I would like to see built into the design is uh, that there's adequate fire suppression capacity and a sign off by the um, uh, fire chief in, uh, in that regard. So the next thing was, um, I, I mean, the principal use of uh, apartment and other housing forms. You're reducing the commercial uh, thing. You've now heard that it would certainly, uh, you know, be welcomed if there is a permission for a greater amount of commercial or of uh, other service space if, as needed. But what I I'm can just don't understand is why the parking requirement changes depending on what the use is. So for apartment, it's 0.5 of a stall, whereas if it's supportive housing or townhouses, it, it, for supportive, it's one stall for every two bedrooms. And for townhouse, it's uh, what one for each, uh, for each, so it's double the requirement. And um, for daycare, it's one for every 50 square meters. So I just go, well, where are all these parking stalls going to come from? There's going to be a, a, an impetus to not build that, but to build as much residential and make it apartment such that it reduces the parking requirement. So uh, I don't know whether there's considered for parking off-site uh, or not. The final thing is um, about the road, and I understand, and I want to thank Daniel for talking me through this, that there was the APC that said reduce the additional width for Seniors Lane or what's called Seniors Road um, 
and uh, and they were asking to reduce that so that uh, there could be some uh, parking uh, on road. I would suggest that what you really need is to bite the bullet and require some either underground or semi-submerged uh, parking, and also to consider having as the uh, the news distillery is is have uh, um, money in lieu and create parking elsewhere. Um, thank you very much. Next we have Tom Matson speaking about Area 1. Mayor Council, Tom Matson, 584 Artisan Lane. Um, here to speak about this in a positive way and endorse it. Um, we've been working for about six months on a proposal that is finally ready to bring to council. Uh, we met with uh, Daniel and a couple of the councillors already just in the last week, and we think we found a way to positively cash flow rental properties without public money. How do you like that? <laughs> um, but it turns out that there's one small adjustment that needs to be made in order for that to work with our plan. Um, in talking with uh, each of the people involved, they all seem to feel it was a reasonable tweak to make, but now tonight happens to be the perfect time for that, as it turns out. So we were fortunate in our timing of coming up with a way to do it. Um, if this if this uh, change can be made, um, we're ready to come to council and show you the whole details and all the numbers behind it. But at the heart of it is 22 rental units uh, covenanted to the property, uh, tied in with Fox Club housing so that it stays that way for life. Um, as many of you know, we've got a place up at Artisan Square and the amount of rental demands so far beyond the supply that we have. I've been working for since we bought that to try and find another way to do something. And uh, I'm pretty excited. In order to do it though, we had to raise more revenue in the property somehow. Because you just there's only so much the rental tenants can pay. And part of the commercial that we see putting in is a shared office space like a, a Regis office center, if you're familiar with those. Um, I've, I've been in one of those up in Artisan Square. We get about four requests a week for that up there now. And I think it would work really well down there. It happens to be across the alley from Telus. And it turns out, lo and behold, they have high speed sitting in that little building. It's just not distributed. I did not know that. Some of you know that. I did not know that. Um, so we would be more than happy to pay to move it across the alley and uh, have super high speed for this. But the other piece, and the reason that we would like a, a change, if it's possible, uh, if council approves, is commercial guest accommodation use. Uh, specifically in our plan, we're thinking of 12 small B&B type suites. Um, and because we want to have a kitchen in them, uh, my understanding from talking to Daniel is it's commercial guest accommodation, not B&B use. Um, the OCP calls for that in the cove. This would be in the cove, and we think it would be a perfect addition. But also, frankly, in our case, in our project, it makes it cash flow. It makes the money work. So we're not looking to sell. We're looking to build and hold, um, be funded by local Bone Islanders, um, and uh, and the people that would build the units. And Jay May is going to speak. He's, he's my partner on this in a moment. And he'll talk to the structure and the form. But essentially, they're uh, the condos or the containers, the Honolulu style containers, if you've seen those around. And that would allow us once approved, you know, the building permits approved, to be open within less than nine months from start. Uh, and, and people living in it. Like, this is not a multi-year project. This can okay, be done quickly. We're just moving too far off. We've got to start oh, also okay. A few so I just want to give the context on the on the request for the, okay. the tweak or the amendment. I guess it would be an amendment. Yeah. I don't know what you guys would call it officially, but um, supporting the change and uh, would love that one little adjustment um, if it's possible. Thank you. Thank you. Also speaking on it, we're more. Hello, Mayor and Council. Uh, Jay Mather, 953 Village Drive. Um, so yes, backing up on the topic that uh, Tom was just talking about, this uh, additional amendment to the zoning can make quite a difference, not only just for our proposal, but, but any proposal. At the end of the day, the council is trying to sell an asset, and it increases the saleability of the asset. 
Um, and considering that it's already within the OCP, it's within walking distance of everything, it seems to be the perfect location, if there's any on Bowen, for accommodation for tourists. Um, the other thing as well, our research is showing that the significant portion of people who come on boats and stay in the marina are looking for terrestrial accommodation short term, and for that they need full kitchens. It's not about going to a hot plate and they're coming from boats. They're doing that already. Many of them want to go into a proper kitchen. Um, and the other thing as well is this sort of a, an approach uh, means that we're taking advantage of the entire hillside. What is considered in many would be a negative of the site, which is the slope of terrain, we turn into the positive. We use all of that as a, a step process. Okay, so basically, that's what we're looking for. We're trying to enable um, affordable, permanent affordable rental accommodation on Bowen that is specifically focused on Bowen residents and Bowen workers. That's the goal. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's it. Well, it's such a crowd. <laughs> Oh, Jake, can I ask a question? Well, I read the <laughs> well I, Daniel went through the last bit of his presentation a little too quickly for me to follow. About this parking and seniors lane, what's the plan? We Is there have, be parking on seniors lane? We have widened seniors lane on paper to 66 feet, I think it is. Uh, Something like that. So, so I mean, it's not the it's not the seniors lane you're looking at. Our property line is much further in. Okay, so that potentially seniors lane could be a road or something. I'm not sure what the width is, but it's um, it goes in a long way. So somebody suggested that we could allow parking on the road allowance, but that has nothing to do with this. That's not. No, I know. I just, that's not, why I came to find out what the parking plan was. Yeah. No, it, it's not, not part of this bylaw. Okay. Okay, so I am calling for public input, and I will call a second time for public input. So there being no further public input, when I call it a third and final time, okay, um, this is regarding bylaw 438 2017. Uh, that's the end of it. If there's no further public input, council um, now can gets to decide on whether or not they want to report from staff on anything related to this. Anyone on the council want any staff report as part of a resolution at this time? No? Okay. So, uh, all written and verbal submissions regarding File on number 438, 2017, up to and including September 11, 2017, be received and that the public hearing be adjourned. Let's go for that. I'll <laughs> Okay. All in favor? Okay. This uh, hearing is adjourned. Perfect. Thank you. So the regular council meeting will start at 7.45. Don't run away. <laughs> Yeah, not why